So I have here an eSystem Sorento One laptop um, whose cooling fan assembly needs to be replaced. Uh, what what happens is the laptop overheats after being switched on for a minute or two and just cuts out basically. Um, it immediately um, turns off without any warning. Um, you can be pretty sure it's the cooling fan which is not working because when you hold your hands beside the fan output you feel no air. Plus if you sit it on a table with a, with a, a desk fan blowing into that slot the machine does not cut out. Um, so I guess it's the cooling fan assembly that needs to be replaced. Now I've never done that on this type of machine before and I don't know how to take it apart so um, you can learn from my mistakes. I haven't found a video online of how to do this particular model. It is an eSystem Sorento 1. Um, first step will be to remove the battery. You, you don't want power to your components. Um, I don't know where to put it. I've got no space on my table. Right. I'm going to have to put the screws somewhere too. I'll put them here, I suppose. Um, and let's start dismantling it. Now, the first thing I see, there is a screw here, but there's also a void if, if, if removed label. Well, this thing is not under warranty. So the thing is to basically remove any old screws you see um, and try and remember where on earth they came from. Battery compartment. All right. Now void if oh void if tampered. Well, whatever. All right. Let's get rid of it. Where's the screw? Can't even see it. Oh, there it is. All right. This thing is old. If it survives for another couple of years, it'll be it'll be good. <laughs> really, if we can save it. Battery compartment number two. Whether I'll remember that, uh, I don't know. Taking them apart is a lot easier than putting them back together, I think. Um, this cover is off, which is interesting. It, it made a loud bang earlier on when I opened the lid, and I guess I can see that it's broken here. But never mind. Um, Looks like I can remove the DVD compartment. There's a screw here with a circular symbol, so I might as well take it out. All these bits will get in the way. What I really need is a magnetic. Oh, this is magnetic slightly. That's good. I was going to say I need a magnetic screwdriver for this, and I have one. So does that mean I can now remove the DVD somehow? Yes. Pulls out. Just like that. Okay. Well, thereafter, I suppose I just undo all the screws. There's two screws here. I don't know if I need to take them out or not. It looks like I will need to. I'm trying, they, they appear to be attached to the top part of the case. And obviously the, the back has to come off because the fan assembly is under here. So, let's take them out. Probably my hands are going to get in the way a lot of the time. But you know what I'm doing. Let's just get all these other screws out, basically. However many I take out, there's probably going to be one more somewhere that I can't find. And I've just dropped that one. Oops. Found it. I'm laying these out, out on the table, sort of in a neat pile, but I'll probably knock them at some point. <laughs> and that'll be that for the, my, my neat, neat arrangement to remind me of where they come from. A magnetic screwdriver is an absolute boon for this sort of thing because they are made to be a nuisance. And you'll see they have this little blue stuff on them which 
tells the, the makers whether the machine has been tampered with or not. I'm not quite sure how it tells them, but that's what it's for. But obviously, once it's outside warranty, you can do what you like. Can't get that one out. Don't know if one of my other screwdrivers is more magnetic. Nope. I'm sure that one used to be magnetic. Oh, it's, it's, atta it's attached to the screwdriver. It is magnetic. Still. Um, right. Was that the last one? No, there's one down there. It's so crazy the way these are screws everywhere to get this stuff out. Keyboard, that is a keyboard screw. Well, it's attached to the case, so I have to remove that. The odds are I will have to get in here from the other side, so the keyboard will somehow have to be removed, I expect. But I'm not sure. I'm hoping I can just lift the back off and get straight in there, but I, I think that's not likely. I think the general rule is take out every screw you can find. There is one that doesn't want to come out. There it is. That, I think, is all the screws I can see on the back here. But what is the situation? Uh, can I get in there? I don't know. Oh, this is that bit that was broken I told you about. Save it. <laughs> Maybe I can fix it on later. Now, how to get this apart? How to get? Probably have to get the keyboard off somehow as well. As I said, I found no instructions for dismantling this machine, so we're just, I'm just going to have to try and see what happens. Oh, 
Oh, there's another screw that I've missed. There's always one, as they say. Any more? Yes. There's always another one. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, whether I could just lift this off. Oh, maybe I can. It's get looking good. But there are ports possibly in the way here. This VGA port, for example, is in the way. So I'm going to have to go in, have to go in from the other side. Somehow. Can't get a, a flat bladed screwdriver in here somewhere. I need a flat bladed screwdriver to slip in the notch there and, and pop it off. Is there a, is there a screw under here perhaps? Nope. Okay. I don't want to break it, but as I say, I don't know how this model is put together. So if I break it, you'll know what not to do. Hmm. There's something firmly attaching it together here in the front. this stuff. Oh, made a loud bang but it came apart. Indeed. The odds are, I think I'm probably going to have to lift the keyboard section out somehow. Let me do that first if I can find a way. Well, it's sort of coming off, sort of. Maybe it will actually come off. I see this case is actually broken in various places around the edge anyway. It's, it's had a bit of a, a lifespan, this machine, I think. I'll take all the screws out. Yeah. Normally with laptops you do take the keyboard off somehow. I can hear something rattling inside it as well. Just joined it back together again. Let's 
looks good. Can I see? It's certainly coming apart on this side, no problem at all. Over here, it's looking a little more problematic. Is there a screw in there somewhere? No. But of course there may be... No, there aren't any cables attaching the, to the bottom, so it might, it might well come apart with a bit of effort. Yes. Excellent. So, close it down and it has come apart. And I think I've knocked a screw onto the, onto the ground, but here we are. There's the screw. Right. Probably lost two screws, actually. But, you know, it's not the end of the world, is that it? Yes, it is. How about that? Um, in that case, I may have lost three screws, because I think there's another dark screw missing. But Here we have the assembly, which I have to remove. Oh, and there's the other screw. Right, good. OK. A bit short of space here, <laughs> as you can see. So, there's the interior of the case, which I will have to figure out how to put it back at some point. But um, that's the general idea. So let's get a little screwdriver and this thing is apparently not working and hopefully it's the thing and not some external electronics that are not working. So let's just pull out all the screws and take it out and indeed there is a, a washer or something lying about inside the case. That's really going to be good. <laughs> what else is, is broken in this machine? Uh, hopefully I didn't break it. I don't think I did, but even if I did, I think we'll live. That's not a very good fit. Maybe this one is a better fit. Right, the screw assembly screws I will put on the other side next to my screwdrivers. I lay them out in a pattern on the desk, sort of in the same orientation as they were in the object I'm removing them from, because otherwise I'm supposed to remember them somehow. Oh, and I've got some tiny screw screws on the... Uh, I don't need to remove these little ones. I need to remove the black ones, like like that. I hope you can see it all clearly. I'm afraid uh, it's a little difficult without a camera person to, to zoom in and stuff for me. Um, but you get the idea. Pull out all the screws. There's a silver one over here. Incidentally, um, while we're inside the case, you can see here we have some memory. Um, you just pull these two little clips at the side out and it will pop up. And you can slot an alternative module in there if you want to. Here we have a 160 gigabyte hard drive. Unscrew it and gently unplug it um, if you need to replace that. All right, there's another silver screw here. Get that one. And there's two more silver screws here. Somewhere in here there will be a wireless radio card as well for Wi-Fi connection but I don't see it on top so it's probably underneath somewhere unless that is it but I don't think it is. 
it usually has a couple of wires going from it. It's a little board, smaller than that usually. Now, is that all? Oh, I need to unplug it as well. So, if I look at this, the black wire is towards the edge of the case. The red wire towards the center, so... Anything else that needs unscrewing? It's very firmly in place here. No, nothing else that needs unscrewing. That's it. Just that needs to be unplugged carefully. Bobble it and off it comes. Now there is coolant glue on these things which I don't have on the new one. Well this in fact is a second hand one. I don't suppose I'll be able to transfer it across. Um, so the new one is not going to be as effective as the old one. Well maybe I can transfer that bit of gunge across onto this pad. I need to put it over there basically. And that should do the trick. But this one, which is the, the central processing unit, I think, or maybe it's the graphics card and this is the CPU. Intel 3A107 SLGL. Well, hmm. This is an M672FX. PVD0123, whatever that is. Yeah, it would be nice to get this sort of glue stuff onto it, but I don't have it. It makes for a good thermal contact. So, I don't have any. Let's hope that enough is enough. And that it makes good contact anyway. If I screw it down tightly, maybe it will, it will, be, it will do. Let's get the replacement. Where, where is the replacement? That's the old one. And I had a new one around here somewhere. Oh, right in front of me. <laughs> here we go. So, let's pop it back in place carefully. Exactly in position. Now you see this is not touching that CPU very closely. Um, and that's not going to help. That may overheat. This one is touching and needs to be firmly on. But here, this is a bit rubbish, to be honest. It does need a bit of glue in between. But we may find that it works anyway. Um, all we can do is try it. But there should be another one of those pads, and there isn't. I mean, there simply isn't one. There's a bit of glue on this thing, but what's happened to the rest of it? Where is it? Why isn't it there? There's no sign of it on, on the actual chip. So we're just going to have to screw it back together pretty firmly, hopefully, and hope for the best. Now plug this cable back in, black towards the edge of the case again. it. A bit awkward, but dot done. Try and keep the wire away from other components. Uh, you don't know if they'll get hot and cause the wire to deteriorate. So let's start screwing it back on. Hope that my magnetic screwdriver can hold the screw up. Not looking good. This magnetism is very weak. <laughs> I 
might have to put it on with tweezers or something. Screw it down quite firmly. Um, I think that was one of the case screws. Um, this is the next. back with the usual difficulty that attends this sort of task. It bothers me a lot that this is not making direct physical contact. I think I need to, I, I think I need to actually bend it downwards a bit. Look at the other one. It's actually bent up a bit, this one. No, it isn't. It's bent down a bit. It is bent down a bit. Whereas the new one is straight. So let me take, take it off there and bend it. because it's not much of a fix if it doesn't work. Come on. That's coming off anyway. Right. Plug it again, retrieve these two screws. Right. So I need to see that one has made contact clearly. But this one isn't, so I'm going to have to bend it down a bit so that it does make at least some contact. But I don't want to break this thing, <laughs> so it's a little difficult to... I've bent it a bit. Straighten it out. There's a little bit of a bend in it, and hopefully that will do the, do the trick. I'll sit it on here and see if it makes contact. No! In a word, because these two supports are actually too high. Well, maybe it does enough by radiation. Um, but there really should be a thermal pad. It's such a shame there isn't one on the old one to take off. Absolutely clean. There's signs that there used to be one there. I can see some marks, but there's absolutely nothing in the case lying around in here saying, I'm your thermal pad. There's one here though which would connect 
in the case. And the paste on like that. That is simply simply resting on top of it, doing nothing, helping that component stay cool. I'm going to help this component stay cool. Because I think it's more important. Of course, whichever one fails is important. Maybe I can... There's rather a lot of this stuff. There's more here than is necessary. So I could just snip it off there and put it on that one just to help. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Let's snip a bit off. Because we don't need all of it. How much do we need? Some. Okay. And indeed, there's a little bit surplus here that I can remove. Not too much. Still covering those components. I can put it on the edge of this one and that will do whatever job it was doing before. What a jury rigged fix, eh? Now, let's put it all back together and see if it works. Which is the new one? This is the old one, I think. This is the new one. It's clean. Well, new, it's second hand. Um, the old one you can see is a bit mucky. Oh, this one has a little spider on it as well. There you go. <laughs> I suppose it's warm inside a computer. Um, Oh, I see. These pads are connecting to these, to the underside of this. Interesting. Right. How fantastic. Line it all up. Very good. Now, one by one, put it all back together. Working. Those pads are heat conducting paste so that they help the unit, help the components keep cool by connecting them in this case to the fan. screwdriver was magnetic for a bit, although I think it actually was the bigger one which doesn't fit these little screws. So it's a little tough to get them in. Right. And at least now we've got some thermal contact there, which is, I've bent it down a bit and that glue is there. So hopefully it will do the trick. Who knows? We'll find out if, it, if the machine survives. <laughs> Try the 
Is this the magnetic one? One of these is. One of them was, or used to be. This one is slightly. Okay, let's try it again. Little fiddly, this sort of thing, obviously. Okay, good. The final two. And then we can try and put the, or actually put, rather than try. There is no try, only do, or do not. Hey. I hope this has thermal contact of some sort, to some degree. And I just have to make sure I remember to plug this thing in with the black cable towards the edge of the case into this little socket here. It's a little three pin connector. You need to be kind of careful not to bend any pins, etc. Pop it in and that's done. Perfect. And now the back goes on. I notice it's, it's broken here and there. That wasn't me. That's how it came. I don't know about this pop bit that popped out. But it's not attached to this. Let's see if it's all clipped together. Clip, clip it all around. It is. Now let's put these screws, screws back in. There was this little washer thing. Plastic, metalized plastic washer which came from who knows where that's broken but it was rattling around in the case in the first place so let's just put these bits back and then see if it switches on when I plug it in and if it stays on that's the main thing because it used to not even succeed at booting into Windows before it would finally give up the ghost. this tamper paper from it so it's a bit easier to see it's a bit easier to get the screwdriver into it it 
obviously the battery had to be removed at the beginning to ensure that components did not have electricity in them because while you're messing about you're likely to short circuit things and zap them felt like it was fully done. Never did need to remove the keyboard, so thankfully. So. This one's a bit easier than um, most laptops. Most of them you have to undo a load of screws on the bottom and then turn it over and take the keyboard out somehow and pop the screen off and all sorts of stuff like that. Sometimes you do, some, I guess this one you don't. Not fairly firmly, but you don't have to break the plastic. Getting there nearly done. Now who else will show you all this in its gory detail and at a sensible speed, a boring speed even. So subscribe to my channel if you don't mind being bored. Um, a, well, I'm exaggerating. I do lots of interesting gaming videos, the occasional vlog about current affairs issues of some sort or other, or consciousness, or enlightenment, or something of that sort. Um, whatever comes to mind, really. I'm a bit of a geeky type, so they tend to be a bit sciencey sometimes. We're having a crisis of immigration in Europe at the moment. I, I'm a bit anti it. I'm, I'm in favour of helping genuine refugees, but I'm not in favour of bringing in people whose culture is incompatible um, unless they can actually genuinely adopt a more acceptable behaviour patterns. Now, here's the DVD drive. Comes out this way.
and it looks like this little bit of metalized plastic which came off may have come from this hole here because I don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's some sort of orange thing inside it so I don't know what the screw is going to make of this but put it in there anyway looks like it's going in okay It's fine. Put the battery back in. I don't know what to do about this bit that popped off here. It appears to me it goes like this somehow. And maybe if I open it, I can can do it. No idea really. No, it makes no difference. I probably would have to open it way, way up like this and put it on like this somehow. Oh, there's little clip. Oh, there's little clips on either side. And it's this way round. Looking at the other one, it's got this little curve on the front. Bingo! How about that? Good. Now the next thing is to plug it in. If I can see, if I can find the, uh, the power supply which I have lying about here. Excuse me a moment. My computer is coming in because I'm dropping the mouse. Okay. Check it's the right power supply. 65 watts, 18 and a half volts, three and a half amps. It says there. On here it says, usually on the label somewhere, 20 volts, three and a quarter amps. Right. That's not the right power supply. Let's put it up here. You have to check these things. So I have instead another one which has been lying on the side somewhere. And the, de the details are covered up. This one is 20 volts, 3.25 amps. There it is, I've got it. It's, a, it's not the right one for the machine. But it's the right volt. It's a, it's a, if I remember rightly, this machine power supply went wrong or was lost or it was bought without it or something like that. Anyway, so let's just plug it all in and see if it switches on and it doesn't crash due to overheating or anything else. Goes in the back. On. I don't know if you can see it on here, but I'll switch it on anyway. The main thing is to make sure it doesn't collapse in a heap. <laughs> um, I don't see any sign of life on it. is on on the power supply now. I think it was, I can hear it crackling slightly. This power supply is not, not the best in the world. I'll just like switch off. Take the plug out. It's a foreign one with an adapter. I see it's a, it's a little French thing on it. No wonder it doesn't work very well. Hey. Now is the light on on this bit? Yes it is. Green. I don't know if you can see that. So hopefully it will now work. Yes, some life. Let's see if I can move the camera a bit so you can see it a bit more now. I can't really. <laughs> Starting windows. There we go. That's, that's all we need to see. 
And I can feel a little bit of air coming out of the vent. Not a lot, I have to say. Very little. I can hear it though. Now this thing, all I have to do is leave it and see if it shuts down. If it doesn't, it's working. We basically just sit down and wait, really. That's, that's all we have to do. Yeah. Well, I can just leave it on um, and we shall see. Do -de do 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 do. It's not getting hot. It used to get really hot at the side here. And I can feel it, the air coming out. So I think it's okay. Problem solved. Okay. That's how to fit uh, the cooling assembly CPU fan in an E-Systems Sorento 1 laptop. Bye for now.